thank you for knowing us. Thank you for your grace and being kind to us. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So good to see everybody in the house of the Lord. We welcome all of our visiting friends and the saints of God. Why don't we thank God for all who have made it to this wonderful Sunday service. We know that God has something wonderful in store for us. We know that God is going to speak to us. The atmosphere has been set and God is just going to have his way. How many of you need to hear from God today? Amen. We're so blessed in this place that God has given us such a man of God that has endured so many seasons and gained so much knowledge and wisdom through time and through his walk with God that the Lord has sent us somebody special to minister to us. We, thank, we are so thankful for the person of Bishop Daniel William Lizarraga. who has been an exceptional leader and an example. We thank God for his stability, the balance that's in his life, but yet we also thank God for the strength that he has given him. This afternoon, I know God is going to speak to him as God has been dealing with him and preparing the church to be ready for his soon return. Why don't we welcome Bishop Daniel Lizarraga as he comes to preach the word of God. So good to be in his house and to be blessed by what we feel, what we hear, and uh, the partici participation of the saints as they build a holy habitation for the Lord with praise. That's what you've done today. You've, you've opened up the windows of heaven. Amen. The presence of God has filled this place. <clears throat> and. He has positioned us in a place to receive from His Word. Amen. We are so, we are living in such a, a wonderful time. It's an evil time, but it's a wonderful time for the church. Because it's at this time that we can know that the Lord, He's going to return very soon. Amen. And the bride the Bible says, had made herself ready. So that's the purpose of church. The bride had made herself ready. It begins through water baptism, and it begins by, and then it continues to the listening, to listening to the preached word. The Bible calls it the washing of water by the word. Amen. In other words, that baptismal has a continual effect through the word because you have been washed already. And that word continues to wash you. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why church is so important. That's why you make it the center point of your life. Yes, sir. That's why you come every, every Sunday. That's why you come to Bible study. You, your focus is there. It's not in anything else. It's there. Amen. Praise the Lord. And So I want to encourage you to be faithful to the house of God whenever the church doors are open. Because that shows where your walk is. That shows where your love is. That shows where your interest is. Because where your heart is, where you love the things, that's where your, the things that you love, that's where you're going to find your heart at. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. I'm going to switch, I believe, my text right now. And I'd like for you to open your Bible to the book of Genesis, chapter number three. Verse six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband, excuse me, and gave also to her husband with her. 
and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Lord, we're so thankful for your presence and power. Lord, I pray that you would fill my mouth when I open it, Lord. Lord, let your presence be here in a very special and powerful way. Come and reason with us today, Lord, as we open our hearts. We come here, and though our sins be as scarlet, let them be as snow. And Lord, let them be as crimson. Lord God, let them be as wool. Effect your word into our lives, I pray. In Jesus' name I ask it. And everyone said, Amen. You may be seated. I have chosen, and I don't want to call it that in a sense, but I've, I've almost chosen what I would call a, a generic scripture for today, one that is commonly used. Uh, the other text seems like a little bit hard, too much information for what I feel the Spirit of the Lord wants to bring to us. In the book of Isaiah, we'll be talking on, we'll be touching on this for a few moments also, the book of Isaiah chapter 9, 1 through 7. But I feel today that the Lord is preparing us. I'm not here just to kill time or to fill my Sunday. No, I'm here because I feel I have purpose. Amen. I want you to, to feel that you have purpose. Tell you here, tell, tell yourself, I'm here on purpose. Yeah. You came with a goal in mind. You might not have understood, you might not understand what that purpose really totally is, but the purpose is to draw closer to the Lord and to, and to please Him. Does anyone here want to please the Lord? Amen. Amen. Do you want to please the Lord? I felt the Lord speak to me last week. I felt this morning, I felt that a summoning from the Spirit of God to draw closer to Him in my personal life. I felt Him speaking to me for me, for my sake. And from my walk, I want, to, I want God to use this vessel. I pray, that, I pray that God uses me today to reach out to you that he can reach out to you through me, and that you can find your, a, a higher calling, a greater understanding, that your will would be changed to draw nigh to him because, can I tell you this? He has already drawn nigh to you. Amen. And I want to ask the question that I see often, I, the things that I see in, in the world in which I live, I want to ask you a question that I, I felt formed in my walk. And I want to ask, or I, want, I feel the Lord wants to ask you this. Are you walking in illumination or revelation? I brought this statement the last, about two weeks ago, and I almost felt like preaching then, but it hasn't left me since. And so... There is, the Lord wants to make sure that you're walking in what is called the revelation and not what is called illumination. Can we say amen? amen. The text that I have just read in a few moments, I'm just going to simplify my, my approach, is this, is that Adam had a walk with God. And the Bible says that Adam would walk with the voice of the Lord during the cool of the day. So he didn't see his shape. He didn't see his form. But he walked with his voice. He would walk with the spoken word. And he would 
He had in his spirit and life, life flowing through him and, and in his being made of the dust, God, he was able to somehow receive the communication from God as a prophet would firsthand. So everything that he experienced there in his walk was directly from God. Now, he receives another voice, and that is the voice of his wife that is brought from his side. And because it was not good that he should be alone, and so he began to communicate with his wife. And in the process of time, uh, his wife not only spoke to him, but there came a strange voice that spoke to him, and there was a serpent that was uh, very cunning, and she, he began to speak to her. And he challenged her, and he spoke to her. And when she became fully deceived by this, by this voice, she not only took from the fruit from the tree, but she took and she gave to her husband. And he willingly took of the fruit. And the Bible says this, that their eyes were opened. Now, when their eyes were opened, they received what is called illumination. And they were illuminated through the subtlety of the serpent. And so it's through this that we became what is called a fallen people. He, Adam and Eve became a fallen couple. And though they could still hear the voice of God, God did not want them to stay in that fallen state and eat of the tree of life. So we know this, that they were cast out and they began to live a very, what is called, natural life. They were illuminated. They understood now their experience was a bigger experience. But it wasn't what God had intended for them. God didn't intend them to know good and bad. He didn't want them to experience good and bad. God does not want us to live in a world where we experiment where we are illuminated rather than have revelation of how to live. God wants you to have a revelation. He wants your life to be revealed, uh, that Jesus would be revealed uh, through us. It is his desire for us as a people <coughs> to have revelation. That is God's desire. So, I feel the Spirit wants to ask you, are, are you living by illumination? For the devil, he is, his origin was this. He was what is called Lucifer, or his name means the light giver. This is what he did in the garden. He brought them light. He illuminated them so that they could, so that they would stray away from God. And his word. So they would not listen to God's word or the voice, but that they would reason within themselves what is good and what is bad. All right. uh -huh. That's, when a person starts to reason for themselves what is good and bad, it's because it is your illuminated state that wants to make decisions for you. It is the devil, when you're a child of darkness, you think you have more light than the children of light. Oh, are you hearing me today? When, when Lucifer, when the devil has your ear, you think you know more than the word wants to express to you. You see, revelation takes humility. Revelation takes a, a desire to make yourself small to take instruction from the Word. It's, you, you cease to know it all. You cease to want to do it your own way. You cease to want to throw everything aside and make yourself your own God. 
We live in an illuminated world. The whole world lies in wickedness. Everything uh, belongs under the dominion of the devil. It was the devil that took Jesus to a high mountain and showed him. He illuminated to him the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time. But you see, there was, there was no, there was no desire on Jesus' part. He wasn't even tempted. The devil tested him, but Jesus was not tempted. In other words, he tried to throw it out there, but the Lord, it didn't phase him whatsoever. He had no effect on him. Because little, the devil didn't even comprehend he, he, he was himself illuminated. He did not know who Jesus really was. The, when he said, if thou be the Son of God, it wasn't that he was trying to put doubt into Jesus. It's that he doubted that uh, he didn't know who he was. If you are. The devil, he's not only the liar, but father of lies, but he's the father of doubt. So there he was, he's wondering himself how the creator has hidden himself, himself so well in the form of a man. So he wants to figure this thing out himself. He has, he has no, he has lost his comprehension. All he is is illumination. He has no, the devil has no true revelation about the greatness and the power of God, even though he was created by God. He thought that by chance uh, or by, by some kind of coup that he can overthrow God and say, I will be like God. As being illuminated out of your own heart is called pride. Pride is the source that gets us hooked on illumination. Many of you have heard about the Illuminati. The Illuminati is a group of people that believe that Lucifer is God. They're totally fooled. They, are, they feel they are illuminated. Why? Because they control the world. Because the devil has given them the world for worship. Yes, but they have no revelation. They have no comprehension that they have been totally fooled. And that Jesus Christ is the true king. And he is the true Lord. And he is the only savior. And you and I live in this realm. We walk in the midst of a world. And we can't leave this world. We have to live in it. It's an illuminated world. Where good is bad and bad is good. We live in a place where where the things that are righteous are, are made fun of and evil things are applauded. That's where we live. Where, you know, if you, are, if you are sort of an outlaw, you are lifted up as a nimrod. You are lifted up. Uh, people look at you something. If you're a hell's angel, you are sort of say, whoa, you know, look at the bad boys. We can, let me tell you, they bleed and die like everybody else. The devil is a liar. The devil, I said, is a liar. When we talk about illumination, we, we are a people that understand who Jesus is. We are people who understand that only God can help us. Only God can reveal himself to us. If he doesn't reveal himself to us, we are what is called, we are lost. For if the gospel be hid, it is hid from them that are lost. This is the true, this is the true gospel. This isn't your grandma's gospel. This is the gospel of the Bible. This is what the Bible teaches. It is a good, hard word that you and I can stand on and be sure that if we obey it, everything 
is going to be all right. Clap your hands to the Lord. When we talk about revelation, we talk about understanding that changes our hearts and minds. You remember the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a man that had a illumination of God. He was raised up, understand, reading the Bible, but that sense of the Bible was, had, had changed because Jesus had appeared. And so he was confused as to who Jesus was. He was he believed that there was only one God uh, and that his God uh, was going to come in a future and establish a great kingdom. He never understood that, that God was going to manifest himself in the flesh as a humble servant. He, he could read the scripture, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. He, could, he knew those scriptures, uh, but he could not place Jesus at the center of those scriptures because he was illuminated. Why did he say, well, Bishop, you're being cruel because you're saying he's illuminated. Yeah, he was illuminated. He was arresting people. He was arresting Christians. He was arresting believers. He was taking them to jail. He saw Stephen get stoned and gave his approval. He was illuminated. He understood the scriptures according to the world around him. He understood the scriptures according to, according to the old way, where somehow it became, it became all right to kill people who did not believe the way you believe. You know that there are Christian societies that are that way. They're illuminated. They used to put you in, they used to put you in the Iron Maiden. Not the rock group, but a, a thing where it had spikes in it that would torture them with spikes on the inside and they would kill them. They would pour molten gold if they did not renounce. If they did not renounce being Jewish or being, a, 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 or being an apostolic, they would pour molten metal down their throat. These were Christian groups. The founders of Christianity, Catholicism did that. Why? Because they were illuminated. They didn't have no revelation. There are churches that as time went on that came out of Catholicism and they became denominations and they continue to fight this day to each other and they don't really agree with what God's word said, says because they are illuminated. Tradition, they are illuminated by tradition. But we were not redeemed by corruptible things such as silver and gold and the vain traditions of our fathers, but by the precious blood of Jesus. That's where we came and that's where we appeared out of. Paul was tormenting people. He had an illuminated way of living. This is why sometimes we even as apostolics are so cruel to one another. We'll leave a church and start talking bad or we'll see a pastor down and we'll start talking bad about them and we'll attack each other because of, uh, uh, of we are illuminated rather than loving one another. Yeah. We become illuminated. Now I see, ooh, they're drinking the Kool-Aid and Morningstar. I don't think, it, I don't think so. I think somebody's got illuminated. Illumination. He told us. When we read the scriptures, we need the revelation. It wasn't until Paul gets on a horse, he's headed to Damascus, that the Lord appears to him. All this bad stuff he was doing, uh, he was doing while he could see naturally. 
And then all of a sudden, the Lord appeared to him as a bright light. He could not see him because no one can see God and live. But his, his glory appeared, uh, and it was the Lord. He knew it was the Lord, uh, even, though, even though he could not see. He said, Lord, Lord, who art thou? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Guess what happened? Paul received a revelation. Paul received understanding that who Jesus was. He said, Lord, who art thou? He said, I am Jesus. You want a little more revelation? Or, 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 or Paul, whom thou persecutest. Well, he wasn't doing anything to Jesus. He was persecuting his, the believers, which is the body of Christ. He was persecuting the church. The revelation, then he understood that these individuals were guiltless. They were actually uh, had the revelation of who God is. Uh, and from that point on, he began to be obedient as a blind man. He was taught the lesson, we walk not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. As a blind man, he was led to a street called straight. And there he found a man who prayed over him and the scales of his eye fell off uh, and he understood the lesson uh, that it is Jesus. Uh, it is Jesus uh, who is almighty God. It is Jesus. Uh, and from that day, the revelation in his life took off and he started to live acceptably before the law before the lord would you clap your hands to the lord he couldn't hide himself anymore in that denomination of the jews he had to come out from among them and be separate when they found him preaching that jesus is god they wanted to kill him once you are set free from illumination, trying to do it your own way or from your own tradition or from that that has been handed, you can be apostolic and still be traditional. You can be UBC and hate apostolics. Independence. You can be independent and hate, hate UBC people. PAWs. But can I tell you this? Jesus recognizes no denomination, no name. He recognizes people that have the revelation of who Jesus really is. Clap your hands and give him praise. I get excited about the revelation. I live in a revelation state. You ought to live in a revelated state where things are revealed to you as a person. Where you decide, you know what? This world is going to fall apart. And I do want to be saved. And I do want to present myself holy. Nobody can be holy for you. Nobody can present themselves for you. Only Jesus can do that. No other person can. You are the one that has to tell yourself, I've got to talk, I've got to stop talking smack the way I do. I've got to quit acting the way I am. I've got to dress a little better. I've got to be more modest than I am. I've got to hold my tongue when evil wants to come out. I've got to quit lying. I've got to quit gossiping. Only you can decide to be holy. Only you can decide to have good fruit. Only you can get the revelation that it is Jesus in you that wants to come out and present itself to the world. I thought I had a revelation when I was young. You all do when you're young. You think you know more than you do. Yeah. You do. But it's not until you decide, you know, there is only one thing that is, there is one, only one thing that I know is for sure, and that is God's word. If you don't, can't believe then that you're not ever going to be saved, you're not ever going to find your way through life the way the Lord wants you to find your way. Sure, you can become rich. Sure, you can have more friends that you need. You can have money. 
You can have things if you become illuminated. You can have a lot of stuff. Doesn't mean God's blessing you. Doesn't mean anything. This is why so many uh, musicians sell their soul to the devil or make contact or contract. This is why you don't have to be a musician. You can be just a person that wants to do well in finance uh, and you can make the same bargain. Whatever it is that you want, yes, he can give you the kingdoms of the world to a degree for a little while. The devil can do it. He can eliminate you on how to get rich quick. I knew a man in our neighborhood that had made him deal with the devil. He had, I know, I was too young, but he had money all the time. He had friends, he had everything. Till one day that he came to collect, uh, and he was there in the neighborhood fighting the devil off. I talked to his mother, I heard the story. She was in our church. She said, yes, it was true. The devil came for my son. And I fought him there on the intersection. And when the devil was trying to take his soul, I went and cried on the name Jesus, and the devil left him alone. Yes, there is such a thing. But can I tell you this? We have a revelation. We have something that is greater. We have something that is so important. Silver and gold have we none. But guess what we have? We have a revelation. I said, you don't need money. You need a revelation. You don't need help. You need a revelation. You don't need popularity. You need a revelation. You know, silver and gold have we none, but such as I have, give I thee. I got the revelation of a name. The only revelation you need is the revelation of the name. So you can do all things in the name of Jesus. So you can have light in front of you. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. I, he said, I am the light of the world. If you want to know your way, you must have Jesus. You must have Jesus in his, in his purest form. You know, I come from a neighborhood of junkies. My family was touched by that lifestyle. And I remember when I was young that the better the dope, the more well-known the guys were. I knew but this is what they would do. They, they, that, that evil thing would give them an ecstasy in their lives. But can I tell you that what they would do, they would cut it for profit. And what was pure at one time, they would cut it five times and sell it cut. Nobody under them had the great experience that they supposedly had. Because the pure form will kill you. That's the way denominations treat Jesus. They cut him up so much that you just get maybe just a little bit of who Jesus is. Well, he's, he, 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 he's good, but, you know, I'd rather pray to, you know. Or they see God as Buddha, or they see God as from some other form of religion. They cut him up, even the denominations. They make him three persons, rather, in his purity. He is the expressed image of the invisible God, that all the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. When you have the revelation, you're not running a third half speed, you're running full force when you know and you have the revelation of who Jesus is. You get away from the, you get away from the illumination. We understand that. We hold fast to it. I am so thankful I know who Jesus is. For unto us, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Paul used to read that. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. There's a son, that's gonna, there's a child that's going to be born. 
She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. A son was given. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who are the scriptures pointing to? What does the word say? You see, if you don't start trusting the word 100%, you're not going to make it. If you start just sort of ignoring God's word, I'm talking about a, 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 a you're not, you're not going to know everything about the word, but one thing you're going to, if you have a heart that wants, that trusts the word when it speaks to you 100%, you're going to miss, you're going to miss it. You're going to try to find loopholes of how you can not have to do certain things. No, it's God's word that forms. It's God's word that forms the church. Notice what it says: "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God." That tells me that when the Scripture "In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth," you can say, "In the beginning the Word created the heavens and the earth." That is a creative word that you have that a preacher reads, and once he reads it, these words are not just print, they become life. But they have, they have to be, how shall they be saved? Except a preacher be sent. You can read it as much as you want, and you'll gain, once you have the whole, you'll get some understanding. But like the Ethiopian said, he read and he sat in his chariot, Hey, do you understand what you're reading? How can I know? How can I know except the man lead me and teach me? Philip drew himself near and began to preach to him Jesus. Jesus makes everything make sense. Unto us, this is when you read. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Why? Because he's the king of the government. And he shall be called wonderful. You see, we have revelation. Notice what the scripture says. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name Everything that is said there is about a name. And his, that's revelation. And his name shall be called. His name shall be called Counselor. His name shall be called the Mighty God. His name shall be called the Everlasting Father. His name shall be called the Prince of Peace. When that son was given, when that son was given, he was called, thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Do you have a revelation? I said, do you have a revelation? You might not have silver, and you might not have gold. You might not have a place to lay your head down. You might not have anything else. But if you have Jesus, uh, you might, you're going to end up with everything. You're not hearing me. If you have Jesus, if you have Jesus, if you know who Jesus is. Yes, sir. You might as well tell yourself. I don't know when, but I'm about to rule and reign. If I were you, I'd be excited about this. I don't know when he's coming back, but I'm about to rule 
and reign. You might think, you might think all men rule. Uh uh. You're about to rule and reign. If you have the name. This is why you focus and you start to live your life a little bit different. Instead of being haphazard, you know what? I've got bad stuff happening in my life. But I've got to pull out my name, which is above every name. I've been baptized that in the name of Jesus, when I go to work in the morning, I'm going to do it in Jesus' name. You see if things don't start to change. The problem is, yeah, God's blessing you, but you can't see your blessings. Neither can you multiply your blessings because you do it in your own name. I have to go to work. Instead of getting a little bit of help, a little bit of counselor in your life, I've got to go to work. In Jesus' name. Jesus gave me this job. I don't know where it's leading me. It don't pay much, but it's leading me somewhere. In Jesus' name. I'm getting there. He's going to make ends meet because I go in Jesus' name. When a man went to war, he didn't know if an arrow was going to hit him, a bullet was going to strike him. He didn't know if he could come. But they went in there in the name of the Lord. Huh? They came back in the name of the Lord. In his name shall the Gentiles trust. Quit trusting in your own illuminated state. You can't do anything for yourself that you can't lose in a moment's time. I don't care what you have. Can you imagine the rich man in the Bible when he died? When he had to let everything go forever and have nothing forever but heartache and torment and a poor man Lazarus who had nothing but trust in God that somehow he was going to get some relief in the near future and the only thing that was sent his way is dogs and they licked the sores on his body. That man went to Abraham's bosom. That man had everything. Why? Because he had a revelation about God, about Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's where God is speaking to us tonight. He has said, have I not given you a revelation? And yet you ignore the greatest treasure that I could ever give you. Some things, all things are, all things are lawful, but all things are not profitable. That we spend so much time viewing things uh, that are hurtful to the soul. Listening to things that are so hurtful to the mind. Things that put us in neutral. Habits that attack your spiritual man, friends that you pick that don't help you in your walk with God. Our churches are stumbling where they should be running. This are trying to make choices. Congregations, pastors are trying to make choices that were made for them. Their women are cross-dressing. Their men, they don't care. They feel like you can even sin in the pulpits. You can't sin in the pulpit. You can't have a number of wives and affairs and think. Shame on the congregation that still consider them men of God. Shame on you if you think that they're still anointed. No, they're just illuminated. They're just illuminated. I have illumination. I can discern. Individuals like Paula White, her linens are not white. Her name might be. Can I tell you? You as a people need discernment in your lives. And when you start lifting up the name of Jesus, 
When you start going, when I go to work, I've got Jesus on my mind. I'm a representative of Jesus. That's the most precious thing that I have, Jesus. Nothing else really matters. Hey, as, a, as, you, as you get older, you realize this. As your time draws near, you realize this. Jesus is all that matters. Our church is totally doing, what do you call it? Our, our women in our churches, you can just cut your hair and look like a man. And men, you think you can have long hair and look like a woman. No, guess what? I've got illumined, I've got revelation. You've got illumination. The preacher knows what he's talking about. We understand. We warn and we tell you. Now is the time to wake up. Don't slumber anymore. Get your act together. Jesus is coming. You have a revelation. Use it. Don't squander it. Your friends, they're illuminated. You're not. You're supposed to have revelation. On the level that you live, the preachers that I know, I, I love preachers that have revelation, not illumination. Listen. We're never going to put this church under an authority of a, of a mega church. No, sir, shame on them that have put their counsel in these mega churches to be mentored. Morning Star doesn't need mentoring from a mega church. We don't need mentoring. The Bible says that we separate ourselves and we stick to the word. Our musicians, they need that same lesson. That you know what? What I need to do as a musician, I need to, the God's word has to be something important to me. Your church musicians, you shouldn't be jazz musicians. You shouldn't be rock musicians on time off. You shouldn't be any type of all kind of anything like that. Why? Because God gave you a revelation. Unless you're standing up in the middle of a bar scene and telling everybody to repent and mend, mend your ways. Wherever your little circle is, whether it's at work, if you have the same thing where they are dominating your life and you're acting like them and they're defiling your mind, it's, top, it's time to get away from the water cooler. Why? Because you have a revelation. God has made you special. And to all, listen to me, all those that have revelation. What's the point? The point is God is about to return in what is called the rapture of the church. And there is going to be what is called the revelation of Jesus. And to those that have the revelation of the name, he came to call it a people for his namesake. He is coming for you because you have the name. He's coming for you. The whole family in heaven and earth are going to be caught up to be with him. But you have to have the name. That's what the rapture is about. People that have revelation. I'd like to open this platform today, and I want you to test your own metal and tell yourself, do I have, am I living with my revelation? Or have things changed where I'm just illuminated? That's old school. No, no, no. That's revelation. New school is usually illumination. Not all the time, but it's usually Illumination. Oh, how he, he said, Come, me. come, let us reason together. Oh, how he says, Come, he let's talk me. about this. Though your sins be as scarlet, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as he snow. Knows my name. Though they be as crimson, 
They shall be as wolves. Let this word sink down into your heart. Word will bring you revelation. Earthly. Oh, how he walks with me. Preaching without the word will bring you illumination. Oh, how he talks with me. Preaching psychology is illumination. The Bible says, preach the word. Be instant in season. Opinion is illumination. Word is revelation. If he said for you must be born again of the water and of the spirit, this is your day to be baptized in the name of Jesus. You have something that's greater than silver and gold, greater than any job that you can have. Your future is ahead of you. Jesus. Oh, how he walks with me. Oh, how he talks with me. Upon all your children, upon all your people, upon all your saints. Oh, it's my day. 